Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I work at Redify. <coughs> We're uh, IT consultancy. I've just started there a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what? Wait, sorry, my bad. No. You went for that mic or that mic? Uh, I don't know. Hands free. Hands free. Hands free. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. So my name is Tim Marwick. Um, I work at Redify. It's an IP consultancy owned by Telstra. Uh, very good company. Nice place to work. Uh, we're actually hiring, looking for um, developers primarily, also designers. If you want to um, apply there, then the first thing you do is look up Knock Knock Redify and you'll find this um, gatekeeper test. And uh, you have to write an API, you have to host it yourself, and put the um, URL of your API in here, and then it will, a bot will basically start requesting your API, and it'll give you a mark, and you can try again, it's pretty cool. Uh, once you get a certain level of mark, then you'll be um, organized for an interview. So yeah, we are hiring, um, trying to expand the team this year. So, yeah, if you're looking for a new job and you've got, uh, got some good experience uh, coding, then please apply. So today I'm going to talk about um, <coughs> React Snapshot. It's actually a package called uh, React Snapshot. Uh, it's a available on NPM. Whoa. We might have the spirit. Um, yeah, so you, you can include this in your React project fairly easily. Um, so the title of this talk is React Snapshot Get the Benefits of Server Side Rendering uh, Without a Server. So, so many times I've been like wanting to make a simple brochure website, basically an HTML page on the internet. People can go to get some information, maybe it's got a contact form, a few other things, social media links, very common kind of use case. And many times you might like to use React to do that. Because React's uh, who has coded in React before. Yeah, good number of people. It's really nice modern framework for coding front end React uh, application. Um, but the heart of React uh, actually out of the box loads asynchronously. So this is actually um, a React application I have here. This is using a, a utility called um, Create React App, which will literally allow you to spin up a React application with a build pipeline and uh, hot reloading, all sorts of nice things in like, depending on the speed of your internet, under five minutes. Um, but also, for those who like type, TypeScript, it has create React App TypeScript options, so you can actually spin it up and have it uh, set up for TypeScript. And then what you get out of the box, box is a simple boilerplate, basically, for a React application. I've done that today and um, then extended a little bit. So the main point is that when you create a React application, <coughs> This is the actual, you can see that line there, that id root div with nothing in it, that's what a search engine will see, which is not very interesting. <clears throat> so for, for search engine optimization, you won't get any benefits. But pretty much for all intents and purposes, the website is invisible to search engines. Because what uh, React actually does, as you can see here, I'll comment that. This is what it looks like out of the box. Um, React DOM takes a React component, and then this is vanilla JavaScript document get element by ID root. And it's basically saying find that div, or whatever it is, and render my application in there. So that's how React actually works out of the box. 
But what it means is, yeah, for, for a search engine, a crawler, a bot, a scraper, they can't actually see your, the content, which is, means you don't get any of the search engine optimization benefits that you want, which is usually what you want from a website. So how people usually get around this is they do server-side rendering of the React. So basically have a server, which renders the React application into HTML, and then gives that back to the browser to render. So it's pre-rendered, basically. Now, for a brochure website, that very quickly feels like overkill. You're like, oh god, I have to set up a server. Server means a hosting, means hosting fees, all sorts of stuff that you don't want to deal with when you just wanted a simple um, brochure website. So very quickly, you're again on the internet looking at bootstrap HTML templates or whatever, and writing new content in HTML and um, heading your life. Um, however, good news is there's this thing called React Snapshot. There's actually a few different projects that do this kind of thing. I like this one. There are others. Um, it's easy to set up. What it does is basically in your npm scripts, and you can actually see here, that says in the build script in your npm file, in your JSON package JSON, just re uh, replace it with uh, this React scripts build and do a React snapshot, and then you do a few other changes like you uh, you import this render function, and instead of um, Instead of uh, doing React on, you just do this render function instead. But what that means is that it yeah, will pre-render your application, and then you'll, um, you'll get some nice HTML. So this is the, as we say, this is the source of the, this is one's running in, in port 3000 in my browser. So localhost, there's nothing there. However, if I uh, go to this, if I run this task here, npm run build, it'll do a few things. It'll do the normal build that you expect um, from, the, from the build command. But then it will also snapshot it. So actually, if we go on this build uh, directory here in our project, what it's done is it's taken the original um, index.html, which would be output from your build command, and renamed it as 200.html. And then it's hijacked the index.html and written it as pre-rendered or server-rendered uh, React. So it's actually proper HTML, as you can see, like everything on that page is available there. So you can, I've got another, I've got another window open here with the pre-rendered one. And as you can see, the source actually has everything in it. And so that's what a, um, uh, a search engine will see. What's also cool about that is uh, you can uh, asynchronously load content into your site. So what I've actually done here, because I'm trying to build myself a little uh, framework that renders websites that are defined in JSON, as I have. Uh, I have this WordPress instance here, which creates, uh, I'm using the Advanced Custom Fields plugin, which allows basically a form builder, which is quite good actually. And then I, um, I use the WordPress uh, REST API to basically output some JSON. That's very small. So you have the slug of this particular thing, it's called a collection. I have blocks, blocks is an array different blocks, I have my socials defined, that's all editable here. That's my GitHub socials, if I add another social. So if I grab my own, add an image, I'll add this just for the same time. This is Facebook. So now you'll see that that's in there. 
Uh, so this is basically like any API will return some JSON. Uh, and I'm just rendering my website from that. So what I, what I want to do is get the um, functionality of um, like a CMS, content management system. So in my index.ts, uh, well, not that one, this one here, I do, I do a first render. And then this is the cleanest, simplest way I do it. I just do a second render, which is basically, I'm going to get, I'm using Axios, which the um, previous speaker mentioned. It's basically an HTTP getter client um, to get the data from my API. And then when I've got it, I'm going to re-render the application. So you'll see here, actually, uh, I'm going to save that, actually, save. So you, get, you actually get a rebuilder out of the box with create ranked apps. If you see down here, I save that and recompiles it, which is pretty cool. Get that for free. So you can see here, initially though, it's the local data, because I also have the data in the repo in just this JSON file here. But then it asynchronously loads it from WordPress and renders it there. So then if I, um, so I added two socials, right? In my static version, there's only one. And now if I uh, rebuild that, you can see it deleted some stuff. Yep, and then it's going to recreate it eventually. Uh, <coughs> there it is in here. So then if I reload this page, Now there's two, two of these guys in here. Um, yeah, so you can, with this uh, <coughs> plugin, you can, or with this module, you can specify a delay. So you can say if you had like a website that takes a bit of time to assemble, you're pulling stuff from here and there, putting it all together, then rendering it as HTML or rendering as React application, you could actually just say, I want to wait for 10 seconds until the uh, uh, React app has assembled itself, and then snapshot it, which is quite cool. So that means you can build a website with a fairly heavy process that takes a while to like get everything together, and then just snapshot it. And then when you deploy that without a server, you can deploy it, just put an S3 bucket, or even in GitHub pages, then you've got pretty much a um, dynamic website which is static. But and also the other the other thing about uh, React Snapshot is that it, it works like a normal React app application as well. So it pre-renders as HTML, but then it, normal React fun functionality will take over. So whatever other, other scripts and so forth that you have bundled in there, they'll still run. It just means the initial uh, view of the website will be pre-rendered. So yeah, it's a pretty nice project. Um, definitely solves a major problem space where you want to have a simple website, you don't want to roll a server, you want to probably host it for free. Um, so yeah, that's React Snapshot. I think I'm pretty under time, but is there any questions, comments about that? Oh. I'll ask everyone for questions. Right, after my question, um, which is, how does it do the whole, it gives you the snapshot and then it becomes dynamic. Do you happen to know how it dynamicifies it? Is it smart and does it reuse it or does it just delete the whole page inside again? Um, so it, it just includes some normal static assets. So if you look at this index.html, it's got like all its normal stuff and then it's also including this uh, static CSS. It's also including all JavaScript. No, right. So you have like dynamic functionality, right? Like yes. The button that when you click it does blah, blah, blah. I'm guessing that button doesn't have like the handles on it until your application mounts, right? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I haven't tried it yet. I'm just thinking about how I'm going to do this sort of thing myself. That's cool. Uh, I, I, like, I only just started experimenting with it um, a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't actually do as much of it until today. I had, the, I had the, the basic idea that this is awesome, and then experimented with it a bit. But I believe if you put in a contact form with all JavaScript click handlers, post something that will that should all work.
Um, have you looked at Gatsby? Do you know how it compares oh, yes. to Gatsby? <coughs> so if you read this um, page React snapshot, you'll see at the bottom uh, the alternatives. This should work for simple cases. For less simple cases, go with Webpack static site generator plugin, Gatsby, or Phenomic. Um, so yeah, it's uh, comparable, it's simpler, it's more like a low-level utility. Gatsby is more like a framework from what I understand. Mm. Kind of defines how you have to do things. Yeah, but it has like WordPress integration built in and all that kind of stuff. It's got a, like in the ecosystem, so. Yeah, right. He does a lot of the cool stuff. Yeah, good. I, I just wanted something really simple. If I can just build my own thing how I want it. But yeah, there's definitely <coughs> a bunch of uh, tools and stuff in this space that do that. Do we have any more questions for Tim? Uh, you showed a, a delay or something, and that's when it took this, it could take the snapshot by default. It, uh, does it wait until it's stable or something, or is there a default time? Or so that's just arbitrarily defined. Um, you can basically, it allows you to add this block to your package.json, which is React snapshot. It's got a few things, and you can tell it to include this part, exclude that part, and then it's got this um, property snapshot delay, which defaults to 50 milliseconds. So it's fairly short, no. but you could make it as long as you want. But you should. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention with this, which I, frankly I haven't done it yet, but this is my intention, is that um, if you wanted to host this in GitHub Pages, for example, for those who don't know what GitHub Pages is, it basically allows you to host a website from a GitHub repository, which is pretty cool because you can go on there and like um, edit and update it. And, uh, but it will only really work with static websites. But now in GitHub, uh, you have you have this thing called uh, GitHub Actions, which is basically um, like build pipelines and so forth. You actually see here there's an Actions tab next to pull request. So this thing it's, it's defined in code. Um, but you can also also give you a visual editor. So say you wanted to have some. Like this is this is my workflow that I have in mind. I have uh, it's going to default to the JSON file that's sitting down in the repository, and then it's going to once it's mounted, it's going to load in some content. Now, uh, you, what you could do here is set up a. Um, an action that every hour or whatever, it's going to rebuild itself. So that means that say you had a, another content management system off somewhere else and it was basically exposing the website data via an API, you could say that every hour, basically like a cache, it's going to rebuild and snapshot itself and then it's going to be serving out of the build directory. Or you could say that every time, say you didn't, didn't have that, wasn't loading it from a remote source, but say you had like a, a bunch of markdown files, which I think how Gatsby, Gatsby works, you find your blog posts or whatever in markdown files, your pages in markdown files. Um, but you still wanted to get that static effect, then you can just say that every time I push to this repo, I want you to run the build and snapshot command. So then you get a static version. Because this, um, you, you can see in here, workflow, it's called new workflow. You can name it how you want. Yeah. On push, and scroll and this thing. Anyway, there's one in here which is scheduled. You can schedule it every day, once, once an hour, or whatever, to tell it to re-snapshot it. So you could have a combination of um, uh, content in the repo, but then you could allow somebody to override it and then re-snapshot it later. So that's a workflow I'm, I'm going to experiment with. Is there any other questions? Excellent. Actually, I don't know about that. It's very useful. GitHub Actions, yeah. It's pretty new. Uh, but yeah, it's basically GitHub trying to do all the things for you.